Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Deck Box Dungeons by Aria Studios. In Deck Box Dungeon, you're going to get an app as well as a bunch of cool stuff, and you're going to choose uh, from one to four players. You're going to be able to choose different characters, and it is basically a dungeon crawl in a small deck box. You're going to be going through different dungeons, fighting different bosses and monsters, gathering energy, uh, keeping your health above zero, which is very important, and also seeing that each room has unique different features that is going to enhance the gameplay. Maybe you're going to be fighting a dungeon that has got a bunch of trolls and goblins in it, and the goblins are protecting this relic stone in the middle of a campfire, and you just walk in there, and there they are, and you gotta fight them. Or there's a big troll that has things that spawn. And it's interesting because it uses dice as monsters, as well as dice to roll when you're fighting them. A basic, regular type, type of die for fighting, as well as these interesting die here, which are gonna be used for fighting the different monsters, and you're going to be rolling them to see what kind of monsters they are. Each player is going to have their own unique pawn, as well as the dungeon, which are these little cards here, are going to be spawning the dungeon, which is always going to be different. And depending on the way you go, is also going to make the dungeon um, kind of open up to where you kind of have a sandbox feel. Anyway, that's the basic idea of the game Deckbox Dungeon. Let me go ahead and show you what it looks like and how to play a couple rounds. So here we have Deck Box Dungeon, and as you can see, it has the full rules here on the tablet, and you can also get it, it'll probably be in the game as well. You're going to be getting a plethora of different cards as well as dice. There's different characters you'll get to choose from, this is the prototype copy, so what I have here is not the full amount of the game you're going to be getting, but you're going to get a character, health cards for each character, the energy and the loot cards for each character, as well as choosing a weapon as well as a type of uh, player. So this guy is an oath sworn um, warrior, this guy's kind of like a mage, you can just choose a staff and elemental mage here. There's another character here, as well as some extra other cards you can choose between. And you're also going to be getting a front and back version of the different monsters in the game. This is an orc archer, and on the other side is a forsaken archer. And depending on the type of game you're going to be playing, is the type of monsters you will be using. These die here are going to be used for fighting, as well as the type of monsters they are in the dungeon. You're going to roll these dice and determine, oh, you got a level one archer here, as well as the blue ones get a little harder, and then the red one is mainly used for the boss. These cards here are your basic player reference cards. Over here is the item deck in which you're going to be getting three of them to buy and the cost is down below and you're going to start with different items. This here is the dungeon deck and it's got front and back as well and basically as you're going to go throughout the game you're going to be pulling these guys out with the app and um, putting the monsters down and all that kind of stuff. There's also some runes that's to be used depending on the different types of scenarios and finally you'll get your little player icons. Down here we'll also go ahead and show you that there is an app to the game if I can go ahead and do that correctly. And and you've got players, and you can choose between one and four players. If I go over here, I can select four players, I can select the quest, and I can just go ahead and begin. This is just going to give you the basic preview. It'll tell you what enemies are going to be in the game, so you'll be using the different sides, either front or back, and obviously this is going to be the basic game, so it's going to have a bunch of the goblins, as well as a troll boss. You're also going to be getting a goal, and it'll tell you basically a... Uh, story. So once you've gone ahead and set that up, you're going to go over here and I'll show you the explore. And uh, as you go through the dungeon, you'll be exploring different things, pushing on the app, and it'll tell you what happens there and what spawns there. And as you continue throughout the dungeon, you're going to go until the scenario is finished. But that is basically what you're going to be getting, the app, as well as all the cards, dice, and the miniatures. So to begin playing Deckbox Dungeons, you're going to be needing to get the main card here. And this one here is going to have a little spawning point where you're going to put your characters down. And depending on the type of characters, what little minis you'll be using. As well as, as you enter the new locations throughout the board, you're going to see what happens. The spawning different units and whatnot. However, do realize, though, that as you are going throughout the game, it's going to be dependent on the scenario. This is just the basic scenario we have for prototype testing. But they're going to progressively get different and change changeable as you play the game. Now, it tells you on these little reference cards cards how it works. Each player can take their turn in any order when they get two actions, and it's good to move, move, make an attack, or a special action if it's available on the card. After each player has made their phase, then the enemy will take their actions from the, group, the lowest threat level all the way to the highest, and then, or basically range to melee, and then from a certain threat level to the highest threat level. And finally, you're going to refresh and do any specials. Uh, there's free actions, which means you can trade with each other, you can go ahead and purchase items from the item deck, as well as using abilities, and then there's skill checks as well, where you're going to roll four die and add modifiers any six plus or six or higher is going to give you a success otherwise that's a failure and you're gonna be using those for things like getting runes and whatnot after you clear a room you can go ahead in any order select to move uh, your characters up and once the next rune is spawned then it once again begins with the players taking their actions and then finally the uh, monsters taking their actions as well rinse and repeat until the final boss has been fought let me go ahead and show you a couple turns of the game and how it kind of functions with the app um, in the game 
All right, so now we're back to the game and I'll show you how it kind of works. So he went on and selected our weapons for each character. We went ahead and selected the type of character we are. Along with the character itself, we have 10 health on this guy and four on this guy. So you're gonna set the health tracker based on their max health, as well as making sure that your loot and energy start at zero. After you've gone ahead and set up your characters, then you're going to choose the type of minions for the uh, game. And in this case, we're playing with the cave trolls, orcs and goblins and set them aside so that we can use them to tell the different minions apart. We're then going to put our characters on the board and we'll say that this guy is gray. We'll put him here and this one is blue. We don't need the rest of these guys here. They're not going to be useful. Make sure you have their item next set as well as three items that you can purchase throughout the game. These are the cost of them and you're going to need to purchase them via the energy you're going to be getting as you kill monsters. Oh, sorry, not energy, uh, loot. You'll be getting as you kill monsters. Energy is used for special attacks that are over here. Uh, let's go look at the cards themselves. This one here says three dice at plus one with a one. So you get to roll three dice and add two to each roll. This is no ranged. Uh, two defense, uh, five movement, and then all these different stats are going to be used for checks and whatnot. These are going to be the cost of energy to use these different abilities, and they have uh, different attacks or gaining health and all that kind of stuff for each of the characters. The minions themselves are very similar as well. It tells you their different types of attacks based on their range or their melee, their defense, and their movement along with uh, stay at max range and target the closest person. It'll tell you who they need to attack, basically. You got your dice over here, and the green ones are the weaker monsters, your blue ones are a little stronger, and then this red one here is specifically for the boss in this game. However, that might be changing or be different. Finally, the runes are also set aside. These guys are going to be used throughout the game. They might help you in some way to defeat a boss or whatnot. Now we've got the app set up. It's for two players. We're going to set it all up. It has the quest info over there and the rules over here. And then we're going to basically be exploring. And to begin, you get two actions per player. And this guy could go ahead and choose to move. So he's going to go take his max movement of five. One, two, three, four, and five. When you get to this space here, it's going to open up the next room and you push the explore button on the app. That would open up, it would tell you which room it's opened, up oh, 2A, nice and easy for us, and you're gonna put it down. Now the guy's in between both rooms here, but that means that this room's going to spawn. And you simply tap the app to see what spawns. It says there's a group huddled around a small fire. Spawn two blue and one green. To spawn, you simply take the dice and you roll them. Now we've got to head and got, we got two melee and one archer. And based on the different types here, it tells you this guy here is the symbol here. That means he's the blue archer. And then you've got a blue melee right here. And finally, you've got a green melee. So we won't be needing these guys for this little room here. We take these things, set them aside. So we have the ability to see what they do. And then we're going to spawn them among the little, little fire over here, which is always gonna be this location, the spawn point. The spawn point, as far as where we're gonna be putting units down is simple, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you put them where you can. You're not gonna put them in spikes and if there's no spaces on this side, you can't spawn them either there. So first thing we'll do is oop, take this guy here and we'll put him down the middle. And then the one spot, two's taken, so then three. All the units have been spawned in this location. And finally, this character has another action left. Is he able to do a uh, range attack? He is not. And to check for range, it tells you on this little reference card what you can do. You've got melee, which is gonna be up, down, left, right. And then you've got reach, which means you can hit diagonally. And finally, you have range, which means you can shoot anywhere past the melee area. So he's gonna go ahead and move, I suppose. He's a tank, so he can actually take some damage. So he'll push himself up just like that. Or maybe he'll punish himself right there, that's fine. Then the next player is gonna take their turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And he's now in range to shoot this guy. So he's gonna go ahead and look at his range ability, which means he gets two dice and he gets a plus two to the roll and he needs six up. So six up is the main thing. Six up, so both of these guys with a plus two. That makes that a six, that makes that a seven. So two hits is gonna be on this green guy. We're gonna go ahead and check his defense. He's got one plus one, so he's gonna go ahead and roll for each hit, which there's two hits, and he needs to get five ups. Nope, neither one, so he's gonna take two damage. For each damage you take, you're gonna move this marker down one. And in this case, he only has one health, so he's going to be removed from the board. When you kill a unit, you're going to then be able to roll that unit's die and see how much loot you get. So I rolled a one, so this character gets one loot. Loot is used to buy these things here, and as you get enough loot, you can buy these things. This one lets you heal, this one lets you gain three energy, and this one lets you teleport to any, in any unoccupied one of these areas here on the board. Um, and yeah, previously explored in a room. So the, this might be useful very much at the very beginning of the game. 
After he's done that, he can simply make another attack if he wants to and roll the dice again. He's got one, the defender will roll five and also defend that, no big deal. And then the enemy units will go ahead and take their turn and you're gonna do it based on priority. Ranged are always gonna get priority first and then let's go from green to blue to red. That's what, I, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. And uh, then you're going to go ahead and select their movement if you need to. So we'll look at the blue archer here. He's got a movement of five and his range attack is going to be three dice at plus two. Stay at max range and shoot the closest to target. So maybe he would do something like one, two, three. Uh, that's pretty far. He's max range, shoots the closest target, which would be this guy. He'll get his three dice and he's going as plus two, which means he's got two hits. And then of course, the, this guy here has a defense of two. So he needs to roll these. Oh, bam, he he's protected both of them. That's great. Now he gets to go ahead, the next character gets to go ahead and he would simply, what does it say here? Target the closest with the least health. All right, so the closest with the least health, that would probably be, oh, I guess that'd be right here. So maybe this guy here and he would go ahead and roll four dice at plus one. So he needs five ups. Two hits, uh-oh. You gotta be careful with the mage. And bam, one save and one damage. So when you take damage here, you'd simply move your tracker down one. So he's lost one health. Then it would revert back to the player's turns, in which case they would move around and attack and hopefully kill the monsters, rolling them for their bonuses and loot. So let's say he got two and he got one. And then we can continue making actions until the next room is explored. When the next room is explored, perhaps maybe he actually let this guy explore it instead. Then you're gonna go ahead and say, okay, let's go to the next room selecting the location, which would be up. And okay, now we got a 4B, I believe that's what it says. So we'll look here, 4A and 4B, and we'll take it and we'll place it there. Check and see what spawns, what happens. Oh, this one's interesting. It says in the center of a gore splattered room, a device creates a whirlwind of blades in the center of the steel twister, a growing yellow stone, uh, rune stone that pulsates with power. Perhaps it will give you an advantage against the Rogrump, which is the big bad guy at the end of the game. Spawn two of these guys. All right, a two and a one that are both ranged orcs. And then it says, um, whenever here is adjacent to the middle area, they can attempt a skill check of three to disable the trap and grab the rune or a speed check two to search uh, the snap to check to see if they can snatch the rune from the trap. If the hero fails, they take damage. And if not, they can draw the rune card. And this is gonna be helpful for uh, fighting the boss. I mean, it won't let the boss spawn more units or whatever, depending on what the scenario is. And so that would be the case. You close this off, we wouldn't need that anymore. And once again, we would continue. Remember a line of sight, you have to be able to see the unit to shoot it. And the same goes. And you continue moving throughout this scenario, killing different monsters and uh, fighting them. Obviously, remember here's a two, so that means he would actually go down to one when he takes damage before he dies. But overall, that's the basic idea of the game. It comes with a plethora of different cards, front and back, for different rooms and different traps, all these kind of great little things, as well as all the different item cards, which we'll talk about more up above. Okay, so a couple cool little caveats. Now we talked, we didn't talk about energy all that much, but you know there's, there's abilities, and every time you make a successful hit, uh, whether or not they defend it, you're gonna gain energy, you're gonna take up this tracker here, and you're gonna be able to use these on your turn. This one says it deals two hits at a range. The next one says uh, shock and grasp, grasp deal two damage as melee. And finally, force wave, push all enemies within three spaces back to the nearest wall, dealing one damage to each of them. And it's gonna cost you energy, and you're gonna need to expend that by making sure you hit the units. Uh, not only that but whenever you roll a six that's a crit and that means that they're not gonna be able to defend against that they're just gonna take the damage however enemies don't crit gaining loot is well, like I said rolling the dice and you're going to gain based on whatever the die is that you roll up to maybe I think three or even four now if you kill the boss that's five but at that point you basically won the game um, over here we've got all the different items you got potions of rage which is gonna give you an extra attack as well as a plus three to it uh, this is a heal all your wounds and that's cost 10 loot which is very expensive scroll of foresight explore a new room from where you are gain six energy with this uh, medium energy potion it kind of like trades loot for energy which is cool scroll of fireball uh, scroll of spectral arrow small healing potion large energy potion so on and so forth this is just a small collection of the different things I'm sure they're going to be in the game and if we look at all the different cards here they have like different arrays of styles in which the dungeon is going to be going through you got watery areas uh, you've got pit traps where you'll be taking damage if you walk into them there's certain uh, whenever you 
go put one card next to another one of these dungeons, there's little arrows, and you have to put the arrows base, basically so that they are uh, facing a certain way. Make sure that it, it aligns up correctly. You'll see it. Once you see it, you'll understand how it works. It's very straightforward. And there's tons of little dungeon tiles in here. If you just the little prototype, we've gotten to explore quite a lot of the dungeon. There's a couple of them that are definitely my favorite as far as how they look. But that is the basic idea of how you play deck box dungeons. And, and let's go ahead and talk about what I think about it. So, deck box dungeons, what do I think about this game? Well, first of all, this is a mini dungeon crawler. It's a game you can play that's very condensed, but there's a lot to it. I like the fact that there's a ton of different little pieces, and you're going to be moving them throughout, and there's different uh, stories and whatnot, and you can make your own campaign on the app, to my knowledge, uh, that you can actually create different ones, or there's going to be more of them coming out, it's something like that. But from what I saw on the app, it's just a simple, basic Kickstarter version for the prototype for us to check it out, as well as the different players. One to four players, and based on the number of players, is the difficulty is going to increase. The one thing I can say that's kind of weird is the fact that you've got front and back sided cards, which doesn't bother me with the, the units, he's got the enemies very much, because they're kind of like a reference anyway. But when it comes to like stuff like the sword, or the sword and shield, maybe somebody wants to use this, and somebody wants to use this, it kind of makes it more difficult. But perhaps it's just the prototype, so I can't be for certain as to, as to why that was chosen um, you have the different sides which are going to be for melee and then if you have if you attack diagonally that's reach and that means there's different items that have different abilities which is pretty cool uh, the range I wasn't sure exactly if it was just a single space after the main melee or if it continues past that because it didn't explain that but we just kind of played it based on how the card was written overall the game is really fun I really enjoyed the game I like the fact that it's ever going it's going to be ever growing and always different there's going to be definitely a, a room for expansion in this game adding new dice adding new dungeons Dungeons, putting new cards out there for the loot. This is basically just a taste of that game. The artwork is great. I love the artwork in this game. I love the feel of the little dungeons. It gives me kind of like a nostalgic feel for those old RPG style games while also adding new elements that are more modernized. With the loot themselves, some of the cards are very useful, some of them are not as useful for certain players, and you're going to have to work together to decide which ones you're going to want to pick up, which ones you don't. The bosses are pretty difficult. Uh, the one last boss that we fought was pretty challenging. We've got to fight, we had to fight him a couple times before we were able to beat him, which is pretty cool because it's not a straightaway easy just roll and win. Uh, there's going to be diff definitely placement issues, well, not issues, but ways you need to place your characters to make sure you get the most out of them. Because if you're not placing correctly or moving in the right areas, it's going to be more challenging for you. There's certain ways in which the uh, enemies are going to move around the board and you have to make sure that you move them accordingly. Probably the idea would probably be the best location they could possibly go or, or way they would move is probably what they would want to do and that's kind of how we did the game. But yeah, overall artwork solid, components really cool. Love the style of how it's a small little mini dungeon crawler that can all fit inside a little deck box but there's so much game in here. If you like dungeon crawlers but want kind of like a reprieve, a nice easier one, that added an app if you don't mind app based games games this one uh, definitely would use the app because it's cool how it spawns the units and there's a story to the game um, if they didn't or if they don't make it so you can't create your own I think it would be cool to let you but I think they they might if not there's at least going to be definitely more missions you'll be going going through and challenging yourself with and probably more difficulty depending on the missions you're going to be choosing overall excellent game definitely going to keep this game in my collection and definitely going to follow the kickstarter campaign for deck box dungeons all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer kickstarter card game review if you like this video go check out the rest of our videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment it all helps and we do greatly appreciate it as well as checking out deck box dungeons which will be on kickstarter fairly soon if it's not already up also go ahead and check our website unfilteredgamer.com we have tons of blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more always putting out new stuff and our new batman giveaway is coming shortly you can also check out our friends at everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek as well as my my personal friend Ferdinand the Cardboard Stacker. I love these style little mini deck box games and I think you will too. Well, alright, that's all I got. I look forward to seeing you next time.